This is Dr. Tom Rozelle. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Rozelle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Indeed, we're live. We're going to bring you another amazing program. Well, actually, one that might help a whole lot of you, and we'll talk about what that is in just a second. You know, we're in the midst of shifts and transitions and all kinds of things getting crazier by the day. And you know, when we talk about, you know, the predominance and prevalence of uh, certain conditions and situations. The condition we're going to talk about today is one that is uh, problematic. It is one that affects something in the neighborhood of about 12 million people or more, maybe 15, 16 million people throughout the country on an annual basis. And people who suffer you know, from it have a very significant presentation. And what I mean by that is that they hurt all over. Every part of their body seems to ache. And it doesn't affect just the arm. It doesn't affect the leg or the head and so forth. By definition, it's all four quadrants. So what are we talking about? We're talking about fibromyalgia, chronic pain patterns that just don't seem to go away. And, you know, I have somebody that we're going to talk to about that, somebody who knows the problem intimately relative to patient presentation. And uh, we're going to give you some tools, some things that you will be able to do to get rid of that pain. The Result Center for Healing is dedicated to making sure that you have options, that you know how to take care of your life. And in so many situations, you're not being told the whole story, but we're going to tell you the whole story today. And none other than Dr. Stephanie Pina, our doctor of naturopathic medicine at the Result Center for Healing. Stephanie, good morning. Welcome. Let's let's uh, get into this craziness. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, it's, um, you know, probably one of the least undiagnosed problems that we have out there. And I, I really think when we look at it from the holistic approach that we use at the office, fibromyalgia really takes on a new meaning because you're, if anything, you know, when we think about all the lectures we've been doing and the information we've been giving out, I feel like we've covered what, how we would treat and talk to patients, a fibromyalgia patient, just by each individual lectures we've done this particular year. Um, it covers so much. And then when patients come in and they, they talk to us, each one has their own experience. So you really have to individualize the treatment for them. Uh, not only treating their pain management, but all the other symptoms that go along with it, digestive, uh, adrenal fatigue, um, you know, aches and pains, but everything else that goes with it too. So it's definitely a, a, a hot topic. You know, years ago, I had a tremendous interest in the topic and I was actually presenting at a lot of different professional forums on the topic of fibromyalgia. And one thing that needs to be stressed with this, this is not a joint problem. This is a fibrous connective tissue problem. And it's one that, you know, so when we talk about fibrous connective tissue, we're talking about, you know, the tendons and the ligaments and the muscles and so forth. But there's so many other pieces because it's, it's a chronic pattern and it, it continues ongoing. Uh, research has gone on and they've, they're always trying to find the specific little piece of the puzzle that's going to fix it, right? The magic drug that's going to fix it. And this thing, as we get into the program, people are going to realize that it's, it's, uh, it's truly not one that you can point a finger at the target, except if you start pulling it apart. So I want to start with this with you and ask you the question. Uh, this is, has, seems to have a predilection for women more so than men. As a matter of fact, the, the literature suggests that almost nine out of every 10 cases are women. Why, why is that? Why are we picking on the ladies again? Well, I think it's, it's kind of interesting too, because if you take fibromyalgia as a chronic 
condition. I was going to say disease, but technically, according to medical uh, research, it's a syndrome, right? Because it's a group of unrelated causes with a, without a, a true diagnosis of how it started. Um, so the syndrome, it's got a lot of familiarity with autoimmune diseases too, which we see more commonly in women. Uh, chronic conditions that don't seem to go away, which, um, you know, the woman's immune system tends to act a little bit different than a man's immune system. Uh, we have to take that into consideration in treatment. But also the fact that with women, we go through different hormonal transitions, the different stressors that are placed on the adrenals, the different stressors that are placed on us overall, how we deal with, in, with healing can be very different. And so where there is no one specific lab or one specific image that kind of indicates what you know fibromyalgia is or gives that definition of yes you definitely have this um you know women tend to also see treatment more so it's it may be diagnosed just more so with them as well too so they're, they're willing willingly come forward as well too the history of how the definition of fibromyalgia started to kind of come about and how all the different um, factors in it came about too and, and where the treatment from that goes is interesting and I'm going to cover a little bit of that in the lecture as well too because it kind of helps to define where the current treatment status of treating pain and and muscles and and uh, the fascia ends up kind of coming from where the the definitions of where everything began too and how we have to look a little bit beyond that current definition. You know it's kind of funny when the when fibromyalgia first came about it it shifted from fibromyositis and then it went to this other pattern of diagnostics and the way they diagnosed it was that you had to have pain in all four quadrants, meaning, you know, the upper extremity, lower extremity. Uh, it had to persist for more than three months, unremitted. It just didn't go away. Uh, there were very specific criteria. They had these 18 trigger points, and that shifted, by the way, and you had to have 11 out of the 18 if that wasn't there. And you could produce the trigger points with four pounds of pressure on them. And, you know, when the patient said, ow, that hurts, you know, that was diagnostic. But it was just an enigma. And then they said, well, it's all in your head. It was an anxiety pattern, that it was depression, it was stress, it was emotional. And so they started going after it that way. And then in the chiropractic profession, you, there's a tremendous amount of literature that shows that people who have sustained uh, hyper-accelerated injuries or, hyper, or, or decelerated injuries, whiplash type of conditions, that it affects mm -hmm. the brain stem. And because the brain stem is affected, you're going to have a global presentation within the body. And all of a sudden, you start hurting for no reason whatsoever. So there's this quagmire of all kinds of, well, it has to be this. Well, maybe not that. And then you have multiple systems that are involved, as you, you, know, you spoke about. And with the fight-flight system, the adrenal system is intimately related with all this. But let's get into this. You know, the, the, I agree with you that, you know, with women, there's a reason. I mean, you guys have estrogens that uh, we, the guys have them too, but we don't have them at the levels that you all have them. And, you know, is that a balancing act? Because maybe progesterone gets out of, out of uh, sync. And so we know that estrogen is very inflammatory, but fibromyalgia is not an inflammatory condition. And that's the interesting piece. There's pain, but there's no inflammation. You can take all the inflammatory markers and it doesn't show up. Let's play with that a little bit more because I think in here, if, if we understand it, and this uh, this Wednesday evening, uh, as always, you're going to do a presentation on fibromyalgia and anybody that needs to uh, have all that data and wants all that data and pass it around, it's real simple. All you need to do is go to rosellecare.com, R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E, -E -E, rosellecare.com, or simply call the office at 703-698-7117 and Tell them to put you on the list, and what they're going to do is they're going to uh, take data, your uh, your email, and they'll send it to you, and you can watch in the privacy of your own home. And this is a fascinating, very fascinating topic. But let's, you know, fibromyalgia doesn't mean it's all in your head. So let's let's kind of take it there. What is the presentation? And by the way, if you need to talk to Dr. Pina today, right now, it's 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Let's walk through this a little bit. And, you know, just lay out the course. What does it look like really? Well, it's kind of interesting. And, and when you bring up it's all in your head, you know, I have a slide on that. And I had to answer no and yes to that. Because when you kind of look at it, too, there's so many factors that are playing into why there's this is so chronic as well, too, why people are not healing as well. And so part of it has to be there, too. What is the nervous system doing? It's in a hypersensitive, reactive kind of phase. 
So that central nervous system is getting different types of pain signals left and right from the body, whether it's from that trigger point or the digestive tract is not doing well. Um, and one of the biggest things too, in, in the beginning of really when we look at hormone control, the hypothalamus and deep inside the brain, how is that affecting our hormone response and, and the trigger mechanism between the rest of the body? Uh, one of the best things that I always look at too is sleep patterns. You know, if, if we can't sleep and get that restorative sleep, and we can't create energy the brain uses a lot of energy the muscles use a lot of energy if they can't fire normally they're definitely not going to heal and recover each other so there's there's more beyond just where those pain patterns are and you know the trigger points that you mentioned earlier that a lot of people know about that you can see those pictures everywhere but from a an acupuncture standpoint i always looked at that and said those points are like 70% of those trigger points and tender points are where there is acupuncture points. Those points also cover a lot of lymphatic channel connections. They also cover a lot of kind of transitions and major joint issues. So what's going on in those areas? And everybody can present so differently that even the cause can be different. Was there a traumatic injury? Was this post-viral or post-illness? Uh, um, so you really have to take a great story case with uh, fibromyalgia patients because essentially each one's going to present differently and you have to come up with a, a treatment that addresses more than one factor other than just the newest pain medication or antidepressant or any inflammatory that is on the market. Well, the drug of choice right now for fibromyalgia seems to be Lyrica, but we'll talk about that as in the second half of the program and what it really does. And they're, they're linking it, they're actually treating it as they would treat a diabetic neuropathy, the end firing of those nerves. They're trying to calm it down. That's why they use it. And Lyrica is really designed to be a, 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 a drug that you use for you know, central nervous system problems and depression and anxiety and those kind of things. But we'll, we'll kind of uh, walk through that a little bit as we, as we go through the program. But, you know, uh, Dr. Pina, with fibromyalgia, there's a lot of other symptoms and systems that seem to be uh, involved with it as well uh, that we, you know, that we would say, oh, these are independent standalone situations, but they all have a common linkage. You know, let's, let's talk about some of those. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we can talk about the digestive component, which was not normally seen at the beginning as part of this condition. Someone who had IBS and pain in other areas of the body, they were treated differently. So they may see a gastroenterologist for one thing and a rheumatologist for another. Um, and then the medications that one, especially the pain medications can only hint, like make some of the digestive issues worse. Uh, you can't get out the inflammatory factors if you're not going to the bathroom because your medication is now giving you constipation. But sleep issues, digestive issues, um, overwhelming fatigue. You know, a lot of the times you'll talk about uh, fibromyalgia and you'll talk about chronic fatigue at the same time because people can't function. Their body isn't in that restorative phase. And if your body is always on go because it's dealing with these pain mechanisms and it doesn't know, it's trying to figure it out for you, but it just can't. So it's super sensitive, it's super hyper-reactive. It's like you're on volume 11 out of 10, and that's gonna wear and tear over you like any other chronic disease would. You know, it's interesting, you know, when you look at it, even thyroid problems seem to get worse under this type of uh, presentation. And because, you know, and here's whether it's the chicken or the egg, right? We've always talked about that hypodrenic pattern. And it's all tied into this as well. We're going to talk a little bit about that when we get back after the break. We're coming up to that place where we have to stop just for a second. We're talking about fibromyalgia. My guest today, Dr. Stephanie Pina, expert in the field. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. If you're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live and my guest today, none other than Dr. Stephanie Pina, our doctor of naturopathic medicine at the Rizal Center for Healing in Fairfax. We're talking about a problem that has to do with chronic pain that just doesn't want to go away. We're talking about fibromyalgia, and we said that it has to affect all four quadrants, three to four months of pain that just never stops. It's, it gets to a threshold. And... It's called, I called it years ago with a paper I wrote, it's called the undisease because we don't know where it's coming from. But there's a lot of interesting information that's come about, but it's, but it's characterized by a chronic widespread uh, pain pattern, often very debilitating. We said it affects women in about eight and a, uh, eight and a half to nine 
out of 10 uh, are women. We're talking about 15 million Americans. It's craziness. So where's all this coming from? And Dr. Pina and I were discussing a lot of this, uh, you know, off the uh, uh, off the air. But let's get back into the topic. In the second half of the program, I have some other information for you that I want to uh, kind of share. But for right now, Dr. Pina, with fibromyalgia patients, there's a lot of indications in current stuff that this problem, which supposedly is not inflammatory by its original definition, might be a brain inflammatory problem. Is is that the case? Is that something that you've seen in the literature? You know, what's that all about? You're seeing more and more of that information for sure in that kind of neuroinflammation or even having neurotoxins that we're exposed to in the environment may be another cause as well too. We can't clear that out of the brain. So brain changes start to happen over time. And definitely with other chronic pain situations, you'll see neuroinflammation. Um, everything that's used, the, the different neurons that are there to calm the brain down just don't function as well. You start to see changes with how, which parts of the brain work. Um, they've seen that on functional MRIs. Um, so the brain's not firing correctly. And also how we interpret pain symptoms and signals from other parts of the body. This Is it coming from the body up, top to down or bottom up? Um, it gets kind of blocked in the way because of the way that this inflammation may be kind of catching up. And it's not the easiest thing to measure. So sometimes you have to get as much information from patients if you can't measure something or you can't see it. So there's definitely, um, the brain connection definitely makes the most sense as far as pulling everything together because how do you control sleep patterns and fatigue and energy patterns and digestion and full body pain all together. What's the missing link? And, and that's what we've been kind of not able to put our, our finger on. Is it also different infections that we possibly have? Like, um, like we see with Lyme disease, we see multiple infections and one acts one way and one acts another way. And, you know, pain's involved with that as well too. So some of these chronic uh, other diseases that we, we treat often in the office that we hear a lot about, but are kind of unknown to the medical community um, have these links. And so that's why we keep delving deeper and using different types of treatments that have to keep changing depending on the patient and where they are in that cycle and what, say, medications they might be on as well, too. You know, with fibromyalgia, the key, the, the key note is, is pain. I mean, that's the thing. It's profound. It's widespread. It's chronic. It's systemic. Again, earlier I said that it doesn't affect the joint spaces, but it does dramatically affect tendons and ligaments and muscles. And, but it's the, the fibrous connective pieces of the muscle. That's where the term comes from. Uh, it's, you know, the, it's a deep, hard pain, sometimes shooting, sometimes throbbing, sometimes twitching. Everybody's listening and saying, that's me, that's me, that's me. But the, the thing that is, is that there has to be very specific patterns. And then as it gets worse over time, you're talking about uh, other systems being involved from, you know, your even be able to think clearly, cognitive uh, patterns and, and, you know, the fatigue is awful. And so now you have to, you know, begin to, uh, differentiated from other situations. So in your experience with this, what, you know, what do you see? You talked about it could be uh, other patterns. It could be disease processes and so forth. But in your experience, is there a common presentation? Is there something that you see more often than not that might be a follow through? Because there's a lot of other pieces of this puzzle. And we can link them all and they all seem to be, well, that's fibromyalgia. What's your experience with this? Yeah, and what's interesting is as a practitioner, you, you get to link some of that because you're hearing it from the patients directly. Uh, like I said, it's not something you can imagine, but when you hear patients come in and they can't sleep and they can't get that restful sleep because of their condition, you start to wonder what's controlling that particular thing. And one of the things can be part of the circadian rhythms and part of the HPA axis, that hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And Part of the things of what that does, other than signaling and getting signals back and forth in the brain, is dealing with chronic issues. The body is under chronic stress right now, so it's throwing things off as well, too. So we have to take that into consideration. 
Well, I want to get, when we come back in the second half of the program, I want to talk about this and the inflammatory re reactions within the brain. Cytokines, which we've heard so much about in the last 10 months in this country. But you're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. My guest in the studio, Dr. Stephanie Pina. We're talking about hurting all over, chronic pain patterns called fibromyalgia. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM, WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Indeed, we are in this beautiful Washington day. My guest today in studio, Dr. Stephanie Pina, our doctor of naturopathic medicine. We're talking about a topic, a subject that is quite significant, and it's one that causes a lot of people lifetime problems, and we're talking about fibromyalgia and that's pain all over your body and i mean all over that's not the joint spaces but that's muscular pain and ligamentous pain and tendinous pain and you hurt all over and it presents in a lot of different pathways before we get into it and by the way our number here uh for you to get a hold of us and talk to us today is triple eight six three zero nine six two five that's triple eight six three zero ninety six twenty five additionally this program is going to be made available to you this coming wednesday evening it's going to be one of our online presentation. So all you have to do to make that happen and get that so you can watch it in the privacy of your own home is simply call the office at 703-698-7117, 703-698-7117, and ask them to send it to you. They'll get the data that they need. Or go online at rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com, rosellecare.com, and register for the class. Now, before we get into it, I want to make sure that you all are still aware that there's a really interesting technology that we have came about about a month or so ago <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it's called the Air Tamer. The Air Tamer is a high performance personal uh, air purifier. And the research of this, uh, this little device, and I wear one in the office every day, removes about 99% of viruses from the air very rapidly within about a three foot circle around you, it reduces smoke in the atmosphere, it kills bacterium and so forth. Go online. You can go to our, our uh, iStore at rosellecare.com and then go to the iStore, check it out. We've negotiated a 20% uh, discount for you on this uh, product, and it's free, uh, fair traded. It, it, uh, you'll never see it on Google. You'll never see it on, online other than uh, what we're showing to you. But check it out. Check the, the research out on this. I think you're going to be very impressed. Uh, you know, if you really have it that you want to protect yourself between, uh, of any viral pattern, this is something that you really need to get for yourself and your families and so forth. So check it out. It's called Air Tamer, and it's virus protective technology. The research was done out of Japan at the major institutes uh, that are there. It's real deal stuff. Uh, I wouldn't tell you it was if it wasn't. And again, I bought it for my entire family. So go check it out. Go to roselcare.com and we have them there for you. Additionally, we want to remind all of you that are our patients and your families that we are offering uh, COVID testing, antibody testing, IgG and IgM antibodies. So if you have a concern for our patients, for Result Center patients, and by the way, for core concept patients too out in Ashburn, uh, we are offering COVID-19 testing. It's 98% accurate. Uh, it's a CDC authorized test. Again, for the Rizal Center patients and their families only. So you can call the office and you can schedule that as well. Dr. Pina, let's get back into the meat of this and talk a little bit about this, this brain inflammation, which seems to be another hallmark of fibromyalgia. And, you know, they say that, you know, with using PET scan imaging and so forth, they were able to come up with this stuff. The, uh, the docs at the Massachusetts General Hospital uh, and the Korlikinska Institute in Sweden said that you know this condition uh, is widespread when it comes to brain inflammatory pathways. What's going on with that? What do we know about that? Well, one of the things is we know that the, all the way the brains communicate to each other is you know they communicate from one cell to the other, one neuron to the other, and it's ever changing, it's ever growing. So if there is inflammation going on, that's going to change its ability for us to learn new things, for us to have different types of memories. It can also change us mentally, emotionally as well too. 
Um, there's even a condition called fibro fog, uh, which is kind of like brain fog that it can affect as well. So we know that those connections can't seem to happen. And if that doesn't happen properly, which you can see through some of these studies, what's happening is the brain can't function and it's requiring more and more energy to fix itself. That energy has to come from somewhere and it often leaves people much more fatigued than they need to. Um, and then you're also having an, uh, basically the input from the rest of the body is not going to single process properly. So you may be creating pain symptoms that are not really existent, almost like a phantom limb syndrome. Um, but essentially over time, what you're kind of seeing is the control cycle between serotonin and dopamine also are involved. Um, so that basically you, you don't have the correct signaling going on. So those are affecting chronic pain conditions and even the other parts of the sympathetic system, our fight flight system takes involved with. So we're basically turned on all the time instead of in a healing mode uh, where we can properly absorb nutrients and get the proper rest that we need as well too. So it's affecting a lot of different processes. We're talking about fibromyalgia. The number here is triple eight six three zero nine six. <laughs> now you did the same thing you did. 9625. <laughs> but having said that, we have a caller. Bill, thank you for holding. How can we help you, sir? Uh, yes. Um, I've been dealing with chronic pain for several years now. And when I went to my doctor for some assistance and guidance uh, and run a battery of tests, it came back that I had alpha gal syndrome, which, for those who don't know what it is, it's commonly referred to as the red meat allergy. And um, the doctor had kind of explained away a lot of my symptoms as part of or attributed to alpha gal, uh, but they seem to be more in line with fibromyalgia, with the with the fatigue all over, brain fog, uh, joints aches right. or not joints, but but the aches and pains throughout the entire body. And I just wondered if there's any correlation between alpha gal and fibromyalgia, and if so, what can be done about it? You know, Bill, that's a really interesting uh, thought process, and it's one that I've played around with in my brain, but not necessarily with, you know, alpha gal is not just uh, red meats. It's actually now some people can't even touch uh, any uh, uh, any animal product whatsoever, an animal, I'm talking about birds and chicken and, and turkey and, and the like. Uh, it's, it's really curious how that's expanded. But having said that, uh, you have, with any, when you react to red meat once you eat it with an alpha gal, you're going to have an inflammatory pathway uh, that is going to be very remarkable. And, you know, you'll be able to find that. With uh, fibromyalgia patients, you don't see that systemic inflammatory reaction. They're finding inflammation uh, in the brain, do the researches that I just uh, touched on a, a, a moment ago. Uh, so uh, with alpha-gal, if you eat something that you shouldn't be eating, if you happen to get meat even cooked in something uh, and you don't eat the meat, obviously you react to it. As you know, if you've had this problem, you understand what, what takes place. And it can be life-threatening for some people. It can, it can uh, uh, go into an anaphylaxis reaction as well. And so it, it can be quite dangerous. But it doesn't seem, based on the information that I know about, and particularly going uh, and looking at uh, what the brain does with this thing, uh, there's, I don't see a correlation between the two of them. So chronic pain patterns uh, uh, show up for a lot of reasons. And the one that, what distinguishes a fibromyalgia pattern, and Dr. S uh, Stephanie, jump in anytime you want to with this, is that it does not affect the joints per se, uh, the the muscles themselves. There's, when I wrote the, this paper that uh, on the subject years ago, there's there's very specific presentations. The we were talking offline that the muscle fibers, uh, the joint space fiber, the fibers connected tissue. Actually, it, what it looks like under microscope is that if you take a piece of fabric and you stretch the fabric and the and the the fibrous tissue. Uh, phrase, if you will, it kind of tears a little bit. That's with the the thick bundles, uh, the big barrel muscles, the fibrous tissue look like, and that's one of the diagnostic modes. And but we don't do a lot of punch biopsy to determine that, you know, with any kind of pain pattern. The doctor's not going to go in and do random sampling. So you have to go with very specific presentations. As we get into the program, there are things that will work with fibro, uh, fibromyalgia and make a difference, and that's why we're kind of 
putting it together right now with this brain immune response, if you will, this inflammatory reaction that I think is quite interesting and may be applied across the board. But I thank you. Uh, thanks for the call. And I don't know if that helped you at all. But as we go on the program, I, I don't want to preempt what we're going to talk about. Uh, I think that it may offer uh, a remedy for you. But with the alpha gal, uh, we've tried on a lot of different levels with the many people. We've been able to modulate it so they don't react. They don't go into the uh, the the crisis where it could be deadly to them. Uh, but we haven't. And I don't think anybody has been very successful at this point in being able to totally reverse it where you can go back and eat red meats again. Dr. Pina, anything on that subject at all? Well, what I think is interesting is when we look at a patient coming in, just like the patient's questioning, do I have fibromyalgia or not versus what the, the doctor's telling them? I think fibromyalgia can look like a lot of different things. So it it can be difficult to treat and diagnose. And so when we, we're going through a patient's history, some of the times we have to answer those questions as best as we can and create the best treatment for them. So it may be eliminating out uh, foods that they're sensitive to or things that we can test. It could be also finding the best things that work for them. If a patient is really you know, tender to the touch, is, uh, is a physical modality gonna be the best thing for them or something like a cold laser? Um, where you don't have to touch them. How do we decrease the inflammatory response that's not really there, but we're feeling it and work at it on a, the, the basically you're saying like the fascial level instead of the muscle level, even though it just looks like it's the muscle level. So it's a very complex kind of condition. You see that a lot with different autoimmune conditions that are just difficult to understand how they even started and came about. So it's a good uh, it's a good call for what we're kind of talking about because essentially it kind of shows you that you know patients are questioning stuff too they're asking questions more and they're wondering you know is there more of a connection with multiple diseases and do I have more than one thing and should it be addressed and treated different ways? Let's talk about you know we're running up to a time frame on the program and I want to make sure that we cover some things specifically. Uh, if you have uh, questions uh, for Dr. Pina, you can. Uh, call the office at 703-698-7117, but also remember that you can register for this presentation this Wednesday evening and, you know, watch it in the privacy of your own home and always reach out to us. But let's talk about the things that we know that work to fix this. I mean, there are ways of approaching a fibromyalgia pattern. Remember, we said it's not joint, but we, we're dealing with a brain inflammation, which is something we could talk about right now for another two hours. But uh, in the cytokine cascade that occurs, and, you know, with this craziness with COVID and so forth, there's a cytokine pattern, there's a histamine pattern as well. But with this particular situation, what do you know from experience that really can shift things and make a difference and begin to turn things around? Well, first of all, if we know we can improve things that improve overall energy so that the body can use that energy to help itself heal, that's going to be a great start. So we have to look at how the body deals with chronic stress, how the body is doing with sleeping. If they can't sleep throughout the night, we have to look at even something as basic as sleep hygiene and making sure they also get the nutrients that they need to recover and repair. There are a lot of supplements out there and a lot of different foods and diets and stuff that can be used like an anti-inflammatory diet or Mediterranean diet that are essentially there to give the body what it needs to function in general. So if you give the body a nice clean diet to begin with, it's got a chance to utilize those things to make all the, the different systems function to begin with. So sometimes you have to start with some of the basics and make sure that the basics are in play before you get to the really complicated things like trying to train brain neurochemistry. And that's why I think when you see some of the side effects and some of the issues that people have with adding in different types of pain medications or multiple pain medications, they're not addressing the basic body issues. They have to start somewhere. So essentially, when we, when we sit down and talk with any fibromyalgia patient, we have to understand where their experience is coming from and look at some of these factors that are not allowing their body to function on a normal basis and why that hypersensitivity reaction to everything takes place the way it does. You know, there are three things relative to modalities that have worked quite well. And, uh, you know, that's, it's in your arena a lot. One is the use of acupuncture uh, with fibro uh, patients, uh, upper structural manipulation if it was triggered by trauma. In upper structural, I mean neck, occiput, and so forth, and cranial manipulation seems to be. And that leads to that brain inflammatory reaction, that cytokine reaction that we're talking about. Uh, but in addition to that low energy light laser and then changing dietary patterns to 
uh, things like a ketogenic diet, which is very specific uh, for certain types of uh, inflammatory responses. But this can be dealt with. It's something that you don't have to suffer with. When we get back in, uh, to the last part of the program, I want to touch a little bit more about that. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We're talking about a subject we could talk about for about five hours. Don't go away. We'll be right back after a very important message. Washington's Mall, 105.9 FM, WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live, as we always are, as often as we possibly can be. Dr. Stephanie Pina, my guest today, and you know my co-host when I'm not here, talking about fibromyalgia, that chronic pain pattern that never seems to go away. And I want to take a moment and, again and make sure that I thank all of you for listening in and regardless of part of the world and the country that you're on, we appreciate it. We appreciate you reaching out, you know, outside the program and we try to get back to you as quickly as we possibly can. Dr. Uh, Stephanie is going to be presenting a whole online program for fibromyalgia this Wednesday evening. If you'd like to have that delivered to your house and ladies, remember what we said, this affects all of you far more than guys and about 85% of the time it's you. And so there's a lot of interconnected patterns that you really need to know about. So all you have to do is go online at rosalcare.com and register for it or call 703-698-7117 and tell them that you want it sent to you. Additionally, don't forget the Rosal Center for Healing uh, is offering COVID-19 antibody testing to its patients and the family of their patients, immediate family of their patients. So call the office and schedule that and they'll tell you how that works. Additionally, uh, check out the Air Tamers. Go to our iStore. These are things that I think every one of us should have at this uh, moment in time, and it'll take that stress level off because guess what? They really, really work far better, in my opinion, than any masking does. Dr. Pina, talk to us a little bit about what's going to be on that program. Well, we're going to start thinking about fibromyalgia in a different direction, not just how to treat pain symptoms and the symptoms that are related to it, but how do pain and digestion and sleep and overall wellness and brain fog and mental fatigue and everything all connect together? Understanding that a little bit better has and how those things connect can kind of help us come up with better treatments and understand where our patients are coming from. And one of the things I want to do is kind of look at it from a different perspective is how do we treat it in the office from a mental uh, stressor, chemical, bio, biochemistry and structural way? And give that information to people who maybe they've never heard that before. Maybe they've never had those options before and they haven't been listened to because it's, but they've been told it's only in their head and, and they don't have these symptoms because it's not really a disease after all. Really give them some information so that if they do have questions, they know how to get a hold of us. And I've always put my email address, that's a personal email address at the bottom, um, that's HIPAA secure that I've encouraged, um, you know, anyone in the public who's listening to the radio station show or watching the webinar to contact us because unfortunately where we can't do these um, live, you know, you, you miss the interaction with people. You can't quite see where you need to go and what information you want to add in. So a lot of times I feel like we have people who have questions that just can't get covered. So you can always reach out to us too as well and, um, you know, come see us in the office or email us or, or get on the phone. So that way we can kind of address it and kind of see what particularly you have concerns of with fibromyalgia moving forward. You know, this is an opportunity to really find out the nitty gritty about what's going on with some of this uh, untractable, in, uh, unremitted pain patterns that so many people, uh, you know, present and don't know what to do with. It is treatable. It's doable. You can make a huge difference in your life and perhaps, you know, somebody that you know that just has no clue. They've been randomly going around. This can cause depression. This can cause all kinds of other spinoffs, but your thyroid, your adrenal system, your blood sugar handling. But now that we know that there's a brain inflammatory response that is part of this puzzle, it has to be taken care of, but we don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg. And that's the whole piece. And that's the important part. But as you identify the, the patterns, if you can modulate one down as you're bringing, bringing the body's uh, total structural, chemical, emotional platform back into balance, then life gets better. We've had 
many, many patients that have come in with diagnostics of fibromyalgia. One, is it really fibromyalgia? You have to make sure that you diagnose it properly. If it's not, you have to treat that and make sure that it's treated properly and you look at it from a multi-dimensional platform. You know, these type of programs, Dr. Pina, are, are uh, for me, they're so much fun because I really get to start picking at things and kind of win it through. And for our patients, it gives them an op- another opportunity. But listen to the brilliance of, of uh, Dr. Pina this Wednesday. Uh, call and get it done. And remember, we're here for you every Sunday at 11 a.m. Simply for one reason. We love you. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com.